welcome to Flute Tube. We've been talking about harmonics the past couple of weeks, what exactly they are musically and how we play them on the flute, how they're made. And I've had several requests for some harmonics exercises. There are a lot out there and they are very useful. So I'm glad there's interest. What I'm going to do today is give you a few ideas about what I'm thinking when I practice harmonics, how to best get them out, some good goals to have when you work on harmonics. And then I'll go straight into giving you several exercises to practice harmonics. I have to give a huge shout out to my student Cameron today. I've known ever since I started to teach Cameron that she loves to practice harmonics and I asked her to send me some of her favorite harmonics exercises. So two of the big exercises that I will give you today came from Cameron. So if you're happy to have harmonics exercises, please leave a like on this video. Perhaps also leave a comment to specifically thank Cameron for sending along some of her favorite harmonics exercises. I mentioned in the episode two weeks ago that I will link that one of the big advantages to practicing harmonics is that you learn where to find the different registers of your flute very well purely with your error, not with any aid from changing your fingerings. That's one of the reasons early tone studies that beginner flute players are given are often harmonics. They just help us to understand how the flute functions, how the different registers come out. But no matter how advanced you are, your tone will gain a lot if you regularly play harmonics because they are great for the resonance of your sound. When you play a low pitch on your flute that's a fundamental pitch and you can easily generate the harmonics above it, as we mentioned two weeks ago, those are pitches that you want to have present in your fundamental sound as overtones. So the more in tune you are with yourself and how to generate those different harmonics, from a fundamental pitch, the more resonance you will keep in those fundamental pitches because you'll have a more full, rich sound with those overtones in it. I'm gonna give you a few general notes about playing harmonics before we get into the exercises. A good first note to keep in mind is that we talked long ago in a very early episode of Flute Tube called Understanding the Low Register about what generates a flute sound. We talked about your air and how you want to separate how you think of your air into three different components. There's air speed, there's air angle, and there's air volume. And the different registers that you get from your flute depend on air speed and air angle. And what you don't want, especially, I mentioned that beginner flute players are often tempted to blow really hard. If you just think blow hard, then you can get higher notes. But you don't want to rely on that because if you increase air volume, that is going to increase your dynamics. So you don't want to be trapped into always playing louder to get your high notes and softer to get your low notes. We want to treat air angle and air speed independently of air volume. In harmonics, this means that as a default, I try not to crescendo when I go up the harmonic series. This doesn't mean you should never do it, but your flute wants you to do that and it's good to not always give in to your flute tendencies. So I will sometimes even think of playing the bottom note loud and then getting softer as I go up the harmonic series to counteract that tendency. Another default that I have with harmonics is that as a default, I practice them legato, very legato because then you have to have great control of exactly how the airspeed bumps you up your registers. If you articulate, that articulation can give you a temporary bump in airspeed and that can help you to navigate up and down your harmonics. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but it's an easier thing. We want to get away from the easy default, try to play very legato so that we know we can control exactly when and how we move up and down our harmonics. If you've never practiced harmonics before and you want to go to the simplest case scenario of a simple tube, you can start with just your head joint. We mentioned a couple of weeks ago that if you blow through an open tube, you get a higher pitch than if you blow through a closed tube. 
basically an octave difference will come out. You can play a few pitches on your head joint that will be higher and lower and give you an idea what a harmonic is. Try to get these pitches not with air volume, but with air speed. Different people focus on different things for air speed. Some focus a lot on embouchure, some focus a lot on support. Find what works for you. I will say try to get your power from your big, powerful muscles. So I try not to overdo things with my embouchure. I try to think very free in my embouchure, very forward and relaxed. You do want to check in with your embouchure when you're playing harmonics. It's a great time to make sure you're doing what you really want to be doing with your embouchure. I try to make sure with students that they're not smiling, especially in the low register, and that they're always very forward. Your aperture between your lips should get a little bit smaller as you go up because that will help you to get faster airspeed. And if you want to know more about these topics, I will link another video that I did a while ago called Three Flute Embouchure Goals. And that talks a lot about what we're trying to do with our aperture and what we're doing with our embouchure. As you go up and down, be sure that you aren't getting louder going up, softer coming down. Try maybe to start loud on the bottom pitch and decrescendo as you go up. Once you're ready to try harmonics on your whole flute, which may be right away or may take a little time, just try going up and down an octave first. So play a note that feels good, maybe a D, and just go up the octave to the D above without moving any fingers. So you're doing it completely with your air. If you're a new enough beginner that this feels awkward, don't feel bad about that. Most people find that this exercise is easier to do going backwards. What I mean by that is you can start by playing that D an octave above. Go ahead and lift your first finger, play your D, and then finger the low D and just leave the pitch up on that middle register D. This will show you exactly what it feels like to play that middle register D while you're fingering the low D. Once it feels easy to go up and down by octaves without any help from your fingers, you'll want to add the next harmonic in the series. So you'll play the fundamental pitch, you'll go up an octave, and then you'll add a fifth above that octave. This is a tricky note for a lot of people to get, so take your time and find it. And as I mentioned, I like to always practice legato, going up and then coming back down. And I like to practice with no vibrato because this helps you to concentrate really on your basic airstream. Vibrato can act like a band-aid or like makeup. It can cover up if something is going a little bit wrong. Remember that the goal here is to find exactly where those registers lie without using your fingers to help in any way. Even though your embouchure will change between octaves, minimize lip motion between registers. Always think forward and relax with your embouchure no matter what register you're in. For more thoughts about how to control your embouchure, you can watch my video, three flute embouchure goals and if you're trying to think how could I use support to jump between registers you might also watch a video I did I talked about two very related methods to get a little kick of support that I learned from two different teachers one called this the ha exercise and one called it the octave button and those are good exercises to think about how you can just jump start your support a little bit to help you get between flute registers let's go on to harmonics exercise number one I feel this is the most basic way to practice harmonics, and this is the exercise that I give all students who have never practiced harmonics before. It ties directly into what we've already been talking about. You play a low fundamental pitch. When you get confident with it, play the lowest fundamental pitch on your flute. So for me, that's a low B. For some of you, it might be a low C. And just go up an octave and come back down. Very legato, no vibrato. Once you're confident with that, go up the octave and the fifth and come back down. And you simply add another pitch up the harmonic series until you have too much of a case of diminishing returns. The highest I ever go is up three octaves. Once you've gone up the harmonic series, the highest you feel confident at the time. Once you've done that on the low B, go to the low C. Do the same thing, then C sharp, and you just move your way chromatically up the flute 
going up as high as you can. Just focus on the harmonics in the series that are the most practical and beneficial, and those will tend to be the ones within the first two octaves range, extending into the third octave of range that we have on the flute. For me, when I practice harmonics, I find it doesn't help me much to go beyond pitches above, say, the high B. For our harmonics exercise number two, I'm going to refer you to the Trevor Y practice books. I know there are lots of fans of the Trevor Y practice books out there, and you will likely have seen this exercise already in the first book on tone that he published. He's basically having you navigate up and down and gain more comfort and familiarity with how to find different harmonics. And as a footnote to mentioning this exercise, I will say that it's great to make up your own harmonics exercises. Try different rhythms, try going up and down, try improvising, and feel that you can navigate through the different harmonic series of each fundamental pitch without too much difficulty. Today's harmonics exercise number three that I'm giving you is one that my student Cameron sent me. It's one of her favorites, and we must credit flutist Gaspar Hoyos for writing this down. This is something that she got from him. She did mention she likes to start at measure 26, and she likes to reverse the dynamics most of the time, start loud and get softer for reasons that I've already mentioned today. So these are good exercises, good ways to think through your real fingerings versus your harmonic fingerings. You'll see that some pitches have a harmonic over them and other matching pitches do not. So you can worry about matching your harmonics pitch with your normal fingering pitch. And those should be in tune. If those are in tune, you're in a better position to play well in tune with yourself, with your own flute scale. On to our harmonic exercise number four. This comes from flutist Leon Baizi. This is another way to think about pitch while you're playing harmonics. You will see right away in this exercise, we're playing the same two pitches all the time, but we're changing our fingering. First, we're getting the harmonics that are two octaves above your fundamental pitch that you're fingering. Then we're getting the harmonics that are an octave plus a fifth above where you're fingering. And then you finger the actual pitches. So again, we're thinking about how do we match pitches through all of these different harmonics and fingerings. And Leon Baizi left some very good tips, making sure the corners of your lips are in neutral, what I said earlier about don't smile, especially in the lower register. Strive for freedom of air, embouchure, and tone. I love that word, freedom. She wants you to use your air, get used to the air being the tool that makes these harmonics resonate and ring and work. Start loud, really use your air, and as you gain control, then you can try different dynamics. Now you have a number of no doubt useful, hopefully also fun and interesting ways to practice harmonics. They really can drastically improve your acquaintance with where your flute registers are and your resonance and fullness of sound. Also your ability to be very flexible going through different registers of your flute. So it is well worth the time invested that you spend practicing harmonics. I forgot, I have one more quick note for you, which is that next week we're going to talk about one more related topic, which is practicing whistle tones. Whistle tones are so closely related to harmonics, but I think they do deserve their own video. And if you come up with any more harmonics topics that you feel I've neglected, please leave a comment. Tell me what else you'd like to learn or hear about harmonics practice, and we'll get to that as well. Now go practice harmonics. Have fun practicing.